So I'm just going to wait for people to start jumping in here. We are going to be playing with the Basket of Fun toner sheets, um, but kind of mixing it up a little bit. So of course we're going to be foiling with them, but then we're also going to be adding some stenciling and glitz glitter gelling. So that's super exciting. I like to show you ways to take the toner sheets and do something new and exciting with them. So continue to check out the ThermoWeb blog and YouTube channel because you're going to be seeing some more projects with the toner sheets in the future, um, including a project that I've done that you're gonna be able to see die cutting with this. So, and we might actually do some die cutting today. I was kind of thinking about cutting the panel down a little bit, but I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. So as people are coming in, I just want to remind everybody that the basket of fun toner sheets come in A2 sized in both the white and the craft. Uh, slimline size in the white and the craft, as well as eight and a half by 11 clear toner card sheets. So a lot of different designs, a lot of different ways that you're gonna be able to use them. And the Basket of Fun has two different printed designs. So the Easter eggs, which is what we're going to be doing today. And then the Easter bunnies, which I've worked with in the past. So really, really cute and they are limited edition. So once they're gone, they're gone. And another reminder, we have five foil colors on sale right now at the Thermal Web website just to kind of go along with the Basket of Fun toner sheets. So the colors are the Pink Melon, which we're going to be using today because this is one of my absolute favorite colors of foil. Uh, there's Teal. Those are the two Deco foil colors. And then there's two Gina K Designs foil colors, Dazzling Orange and Jelly Bean Green. And then we also have Brutus Monroe Purple Sketch is another one that's on sale. So all three types of foil that you're going to find on the Thermal Web website, deco foil, transfer sheets, uh, Gina K Designs fancy foils, and then also the Brutus Monroe transfer sheets, all three types of foils are going to work beautifully with all of the products on the Thermal Web website. So the transfer sheets, they're going to work great with the uh, gels, the transfer gels, and double-sided adhesives, everything. So let's kind of jump in. If you're new here, we're just gonna create a quick card project um, and feel free to ask any questions. I'm here to answer your questions and then there's always other people in the chat that can answer some questions as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I am actually using, I know this looks like the A2 card front, but it's actually a slimline toner card front that I have cut down to A2 size. So this one, I think I cut it down to five inches. That's what I needed it to be, or five and, um, did I cut it down to five and a quarter? So it's going to go right across a card base, which I have cut that as well. So it should be five and, a, five and a half inches long. And then I cut it to four inches tall. So you're going to see a little bit of white peeking out at the top. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with some ink blending on my card front here. You can do your ink blending before or after you foil. It doesn't matter at all. Last time I think I did it after. So I'm gonna do it before this time just to show you that it doesn't matter. And if I did it, before last time as well, I apologize, <laughs> but there's definitely videos on the YouTube channel uh, for ThermoWeb showing ink blending on the toner sheets before and after foiling. I'm going to be doing a yellow background. Yellow is my favorite color. I think it's just such a happy and bright color. The sun is actually shining where I am today. So I'm inspired to do some yellow ink blending. So I'm just gonna grab some ink. I have blended on the toner sheets with Distress Oxide inks, so you can definitely use Oxide inks. Um, and then I have also used Hybrid inks, Dye inks, it doesn't matter. Um, so any kind of ink that you have in your stash is going to work. All right, let's get started. I've just set up my phone here. I, it wasn't on and I'm like, why don't I see the chat coming in? Well, that's why. So today I'm working with Dye inks just because I happen to like this color yellow. So again, use whatever inks you have in your stash. I'm using a blender brush, but if you have blending foams, those work perfectly as well. 
and I'm just gonna go all over my panel that I've cut down. And then I might even bring in, I think I'm gonna bring in a little bit of an orange color on the outer edge. I think that'll be pretty. Let me grab my orange blending brush. And usually I go with a light orange. I think this time I'm gonna go with a slightly darker orange and really kind of bring some color in here. Oh, that's pretty. It's bright and springy, I think, and perfect for Easter. So again, as you guys are watching, if you have questions, leave them in the chat. I'm here to answer your questions. Um, and then also, we have a new ThermoWeb Facebook group. And people have been asking questions over there, which I absolutely love. I love seeing you guys ask your questions and get answers to your questions. So be sure to join the ThermoWeb Facebook group. It's ThermoWeb Craft Room. If you just search that, it'll come right up. There's lots of projects being shared there. All right, there we go. So here is my next tip for foiling with the transfer sheets. I've done some ink blending, so just in case there's any ink blending left on my panel, I like to give it a little white. Even if I haven't done ink blending, I always suggest grabbing, this is just a dry, it, it's a clean cloth, I know it doesn't look it, but it's what I wipe my stamps off with, so it is clean, it goes through my washer and dryer. Um, but I always recommend giving your panel a quick wipe down. I have cats. I have three cats actually, so that's a good number of cats. So we have cat hair floating around in the air. I don't dust as often as I should. I mean, let's be honest, there's always things that are more important, vacuuming, dishes, things that you can see. And so dusting always gets pushed to the wayside. So I think I'm in the same boat with a lot of other people. There's just dust particles floating around. So you always wanna give your panel a quick wipe down just to get any dust that may be sitting on there off before you run this through your laminator. I use, let's see, oh no, I can't find them. I use the Deco Foil parchment paper. Here it is. This has been a game changer for me in my laminator uh, to use as a carrier sheet. And I don't know what's different about it, but it just works perfectly for me. So I have my carrier sheet here ready to go. I'm gonna grab foil. And like I said before, you can use any of the three types of foil that are on the ThermoWeb website. Deco foil transfer sheets. Ooh, that went flying. <laughs> Gina K Designs Fancy Foils or the Brutus Monroe foils. This is the Pink Melon. Isn't that just so pretty? I love this color. I think it's gonna work really, really well with my yellow background. So I'm going to grab a piece and I want to cut this down so that it is just a little bit bigger than my card front. So I'm going to grab my scissors and just trim this off. So all the foils are going to work the same. You want to run them through your laminator with the back side of the foil, so the dull side, your silver side here against your medium, which in this case is the toner. So you wanna be pretty side up, back side against the toner. And I'm just gonna put that into my carrier sheet. And I have my laminator heating up next to me. I actually plugged in my laminator about 15 minutes before I came live. So it's been on for a good 25 to 30 minutes. It's heated up, it's ready to go. I always recommend leaving your laminator on for 15 minutes after your ready light comes on. Then you'll know it's good and hot. So I'm gonna put this through. And this is the most agonizing part about foiling, is waiting for your laminator to feed through and get that gorgeous design. So while that's working there, I'm just gonna tidy up here. I love that the deco foil is easy to put away. All I do is just kind of roll it up and put it right back into that container. The hardest part now is that when I took the lid off, it went flying. So I'm going to have to locate that later on. <clears throat> so here comes my foiled piece. I put it in so that it was right side up in my carrier sheet. I like to then flip it over and run it through again. Once again, I don't know if that actually does anything, 
it's just something that I have always done since the beginning of my foiling time. So it's just what I do. So it's coming through now. And once that's done, you're going to see how beautiful and shiny that pink melon foil is on the ink blending. And I should mention too that you don't have to just do ink blending. I know we've done ink blending a couple times now, um, but you can do color pencil coloring. You could do Copic coloring on these backgrounds. They really, and you can color right over the toner, even with alcohol markers. I've done that and it's totally fine. I think this is almost ready to come out. Do, do, do. All right, and so once it pops out, I'm just gonna take that out of the carrier sheet, give that a wave so that it'll dry, and then I'm gonna peel this back slowly. Uh, you don't wanna like rip it off. I say to just pull it off, just like when you're pulling a stencil off or like masking tape off, kind of peel it back on itself. And look at that, it's perfect. That pink melon, let's try to get it in the light there. There we go. Isn't it so, so pretty? I love this color. Love it, love it, love it. And then you can always use this negative piece. Let's see if I have a white background. The negative piece is super pretty to use as well. Look at that. Isn't this so pretty? Okay, so now that we have our background piece here, you could leave it like this with just the ink blending and the foiling, and it would be absolutely gorgeous, but I'm going to add some stenciling over the top. So I have, this is the Simon Says Stamp Tiny Spaced Heart Stencil. Any stencil in your stash will work. I just liked the hearts with the Easter eggs. I thought that they would be super cute. So I'm going to tape this on to the back here. You could use Pixie Spray. And in fact, I had intended to use Pixie Spray and I gathered all of my supplies like a good organized girl and gathered them all together last night put them in a little pile on my desk before I went to bed so that I would have everything and for the life of me I cannot find my pixie spray and I could go digging through I have an extra can but I don't have a lot of storage space in my house so it's like underneath some things and I don't want to make you guys wait for that so we're just going to use some purple tape and this is the new formula of purple tape it it's not really new, it's been out for probably a year now, but it is pressure activated. So I see a lot of questions um, online and such about how to make it stick. And you can see it's stuck on there. It's good to go. You just need to put it on and give it a little bit of pressure. It's pressure activated, and so now it's gonna stick and it's not, it's not going anywhere. And now we're gonna grab Glitz Glitter Gel. So I love the Glitz Glitter Gels. You can, there's a whole bunch of colors. And if you have the white or the iridescent, you can even make your own color with inks or reinkers, anything like that. I'm gonna go today with turquoise C. I thought that this mix of color would be pretty with the yellow ink blending and the pink melon deco foil. So let's open that up. Isn't it so, so pretty? I feel like I'm in shadows today, which I don't know why because it's actually sunny today, but I guess sun casts more shadows. Let's grab, I'm gonna grab just a palette knife to scoop some out. And I'm just gonna put some down on my stencil. And then I'm gonna grab my stencil pal. So you can see here, I have a whole glob of Glitz Glitter Gel. That is clearly too much. I always recommend using more Glitz Glitter Gel, more Transfer Gel, whatever you're using, whatever paste you're using, go with more and then you can scrape the excess back in the jar. I'm going to use my stencil pal. You can see this has a long edge here. It's longer than my card front. So I'm going to be able to just grab that Glitz Glitter Gel and pull it down. And it's going to do all the work for me. You don't need to press hard on the stencil pal. I'm more just guiding that Glitz Glitter Gel to the left and to the right, because I put that glob in the middle. And then I'm just going to pull down. I'm probably at about a 45 degree angle. And I'm just gonna pull down. Not push, just kind of pull my hand down. And then all this extra glitz is going right back in that jar. So there's no waste. It looks like there's going to be a lot of waste, but there's really not. And then I'm gonna go in here just one more time, smooth that out. That's what I love about the stencil pal is that when you're using a regular palette knife, because it has that point on it, you're gonna 
sometimes get like dips down into your stencil, especially if you're using a stencil with a chunkier area, you might get gouges. But with the stencil pal, because you're going smooth and flat over, you don't. I'm going to lift up this stencil now and then we'll do some more cleaning. So just grab that purple tape from the back and I'm peeling off slowly so that the glitz glitter gel doesn't kind of jump around on me. Look at that, look at those tiny little hearts on the foil, isn't that so pretty? Ooh, right there, that's pretty with the glitz glitter gel and the foil behind there and the ink blending. I think that's so, so cute. I'm going to go ahead and just peel back this purple tape Peeling back on itself, I've never had this purple tape rip my paper, but I, it's just a habit that I peel it back on itself. And there we go. I'm gonna set that right up there to dry. And then I'm going to show you, there's still some glitz glitter gel on my stencil. I'm just going to go ahead and take my stencil pal and scrape off the rest of that so that there really is no waste. And that's all gonna go back in the jar. Now here's another tip to prevent your glitz glitter gel from drying out. Before you put the lid on, take a baby wipe or a wet towel or something and just wipe around the rim. Not going down in, just wiping around the rim here. That's going to keep any of that glitz glitter gel from interfering with the seal. And then put that lid on tight and you are good to go. I'm gonna use that same baby wipe just to quickly clean off my tools. Usually, I have a little bucket of water here, but I totally forgot my little, well, it's a bowl, it's not a bucket that makes it sound excessive. But you're gonna see that the Glitz Glitter Gel cleans right off my stencil. And this is a stencil with a lot of, not stencil area, but like actual stencil to it. So the Glitz Glitter Gel is gonna clean right off. And I love cleaning these because even the cleanup, like it's so pretty because it's super shimmery. I took a class at Junkie Fest with Gina Kay. Oh, it's, it was the last Junkie Fest, so sadly it's been about two years now. And she made mention that the Glitz Glitter Gels, it's actually clear gel with colored glitter in it. And so it's super, super pretty. I'm just gonna give this a dry wipe with my cloth. And there we go, clean stencil, ready to go again. I'll just wipe down my work surface really quickly. <clears throat> and we'll keep going. So last night or the night before, I made another version. So here's pink <clears throat> with the teal deco foil and then the bubblegum pink Gliss glitter gel. So there's two different designs and I think they're both really, really cute but I think I'm actually going to work with this one to finish my card off today. So a question just popped in, how long does it take to dry? That absolutely depends on your climate, first of all, but mostly it depends on how thick you put it on and how big of a stencil area you've used. So these hearts are tiny, 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 tiny hearts, probably like a 16th of an inch. And I put it on thin because I used that stencil palette. I was able to get a thin layer. So when I did this the other night, this took maybe 10 minutes to dry, five, 10 minutes, not even. So we are actually going to work with this panel. And sadly, I think I put my hearts on the wrong way. Oh, I did. So we're gonna have to kind of roll with it. I meant to put my hearts on going this way so we could do a horizontal card, but that's okay. We'll go this way and we'll work with it. But these are, we just did these, these are still, I can still move them a little bit with my fingernail, but if you kind of like wave it in the air because this is such a tiny area, I use that stencil pal to get a thin application and there's just little dots, they won't take long. If you're doing a larger area, maybe like a, a big background stencil with lots of, um, lots of the gel being left on your card, I would say it probably takes 30, 45 minutes. The Glitz Glitter Gel doesn't take as long to dry as the transfer gels do, I, I have found anyway. So let's go ahead and finish off the card. I have this stamp set from LDRS Creative. This is Happy Egg Hunt. And I've colored up some of the cute little critters in here. And I have been practicing my Copic coloring. And I have to tell you guys, I, I don't like to toot my own horn very often, but I am very proud of my Copic coloring. I took a class with 
Mindy Beverly, and her coloring is always stunning. So I call this the Mindy Beverly method, and I think it's super cute. So I colored with my Copic markers, and then I did some dot detail with the Copics, and I added some white gel pen highlights. I think they're so cute, and I think they're going to go so well with these basket of fun uh, backgrounds. Super, super cute. So let's lay out, I want my design to kind of be, I'm gonna work on this panel because it's dry and then we'll transfer it over to the other one because I really think I wanna use that yellow background. And let's see, Roberta has another tip. She says a gallon Ziploc bag with a cup of Windex and it works great for cleaning stencils and tools. I have heard that actually my best friend recently has said that that's what she does. She keeps a gallon bag next to her work surface and she just like pops her stencil in there and kind of shakes the bag around a little bit. It's not something I have personally tried so I don't have any experience with it, but everybody seems to like that method. So I'm going to kind of just arrange these on here. I'm just using this for sizing and then I'm gonna pop it over to the yellow background because I think they'll stand out better. Let's see, I think I wanna go this way. No, nope. this is the hardest part of card making for me is figuring out how I want things to go. And I have a tip that I'm going to share with you because once I get things laid out, I don't wanna change them. So I'm just going to lay these out, these cute little Easter critters. Oh goodness, they don't wanna work with me today. So that's how I want them to be, I think, on my card. And now, here's my tip. And I, if you've watched my lives, if you've watched the ThermoWeb YouTube channel, you have seen this tip before. I'm gonna take some purple tape, a little bit longer than what my images are, and I am just going to lay that down on there. Give it a press, because remember, this is pressure-activated tape. And then I'm going to pick up all of these images all at once. So now I can work with them as one unit instead of, how many do I have there? Four different. Let's grab my adhesive. I'm using iCraft Ultrabond liquid adhesive and I'm just going to quickly just kind of add some glue in areas where they're overlapping. And this is going to let me work with them as one sturdy unit. The purple tape will hold them there, but this iCraft Ultrabond is really gonna hold them there. So I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and grab my iCraft 3D foam squares. And let's see, I might need the big and the small. I use the combo pack because they have the I think it's quarter inch and half inch. I'm awfully bad with measuring. I think we've talked about this before, how bad I am for a card maker and a crafter. I am awfully bad at eyeballing even basic measurements. Ones that I use all the time, I am terrible. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some of these. I won't use too many. I know I have a habit of going overboard with foam adhesive. <laughs> But I try not to when I'm doing lives with you guys, just so you don't have to sit here and watch me tediously peel apart or peel off the backers rather, especially since I've been having trouble with my eyes. It's so hard for me to see the backers. So there we go. They're on there. And now I'm going to give those a press. I like to really press them, make sure they're on. And then a tip from ThermoWeb is to press down on the backer and kind of get your nail right under, I'm trying to show you, but I think I'm too far away, press down and then the backer kind of like peels up a little bit at the corner. So press down at the edge or the center of your foam square and that backer will just peel right off. Love the ThermoWeb adhesives because they are super strong. They are going to adhere tight and strong and the backers are pretty easy to get off, which is always a sticking point for me. I don't like it with tapes when they're hard to get off. So now I'm just going to, because I'm going to adhere this onto 
a textured background. This t background isn't super textured because like I said before, the Glitz Glitter Gel is only in small little areas. But here's another tip. I like to take just a dot of my iCraft Ultra Bond Liquid Adhesive and put it on the back of each of these foam squares. That's gonna do two things. It's going to hold tightly onto any texture that you have. So if you have a big glitzed background, I recommend doing this, but it is also going to let me kind of move them around if I happen to mess up, which let's be honest, I happen to mess up. So I'm going to just use, I'm using the edge of this purple tape. That's why I cut it a little bit longer than my images. And so I can use them as a handle. And let's make sure that this is straight-ish. Straight-ish is always my goal. I'm going to put this right in the center here. Oh, that's cute. I was going to go for a um, landscape style card, but I think this is awfully cute. So once I have those down, I'm just going to peel back that purple tape. And now you can kind of see how this is coming along. Aren't they so cute? Look at them. Those cute little critters with that glitzy heart background and that pink melon foil. Super cute. I love how this is coming together. I have a couple more images that I want to add on here. I have an extra little egg and a little tuft of grass. So I think I'm just going to, let's grab another foam square. Why not? Just gonna put that at the top of my egg. Again, pressing down in the center of that foam square. And then I'm gonna add some iCraft liquid adhesive. Little dot on the back of that foam square and then also a little dot at the bottom just so that it will hold on to my grass. So I, I have to apologize because I didn't catch the name of whoever asked how long this takes to dry. This is dry. So it's been like, what, 10? minutes maybe tops probably five this is dry enough to work with now um, so it doesn't take long it definitely depends on how thick you apply it I always recommend the stencil pal for a thin even application and then it also depends on your stenciled design I'm gonna add this little tuft of grass right over that egg I'm gonna give that a minute to adhere Oh, that's so cute. I can't get over that. Okay, so I also have this Happy Easter die cut sentiment. This is from an iCrafter uh, die set. It's actually from an interactive box pops die set, but I just love the sentiment. I thought it was super cute and I thought that it would go well on my card. So I'm going to just line that up right below and I'm going to grab my tweezers here just so that I can hold on to that. I'm using my iCraft Ultra Bond Liquid Adhesive once more, and I have the metal tips on here. I will go back after this live video is over and add links to all of the products that I've used today. These metal tips are a must have because it's gonna let me add just a tiny thin line of adhesive over the back of this die cut sentiment. So, I don't even know if you can see because this glue is so thin on there, but it is awesome for tiny little areas. And I'm just going to add that right below. I'm going to hold this up in the air. Oops, I moved it. I smudged it. That's okay. Just to make sure that's straight. I'm just eyeballing it. That looks good enough to me. And then I'm going to give that a press and that will adhere. And then same thing with the Easter, just using that metal tip on my glue bottle, adding a little bit of adhesive. I'm not even doing the dotting method. I'm just lightly squeezing my bottle so that a thin line is coming out consistently. And then I'm going to put my pin back in there. Move that to the side. You guys should see my desk. I am normally such a neat and tidy crafter, but when I do lives, I just have an area to the left of me. Everything just gets shoved there. I'm gonna line this up here. And I'm gonna make sure that looks good. I think it does. I think that looks okay. Give that a press. And now let's adhere this on to our card base. 
I have a top folding, like landscape style card base because that's what I thought we were gonna do. So now I have to switch it out for one of these. Oh, look at that, that's so cute. And um, I had cut this down beforehand so that it measures, now it's four inches wide by five and a half inches tall. So there's going to be just a thin border of white around the left and right hand side of my card. Gonna add just a little bit of adhesive. That um, fine tip is even great for large areas like how I just added glue all over the background because I can add just a thin little line all over and I'm not wasting a lot of glue. It's going to go a long, long way. So I'm just going to line this up in the center. Oh my gosh, you guys, I think this is so cute. Super, super cute. Sometimes, you know how when you make a card and it turns out even better than what you had in your head? That's always such a nice surprise. There we go. That's it, that's a card done in just about 30 minutes. The only thing I did ahead of time was die cut my sentiment and color my images. So you could easily have this card done in an hour. And look at how much is packed into here. You have ink blending on top of the toner sheets, you have foiling, you have glitz glitter gel stenciling. Super cute. I'm gonna try my best so you can get all that glitzy glitter gel and shine from the foils. So while we are wrapping up, remember to join the ThermoWeb Facebook group if you want to see even more inspiration um, over there. And remember that the Basket of Fun toner sheets are limited edition. So they will be going away soon, as will the sale on five of the foil colors, the Deco Foil Teal and Pink Melon, which we used today was the Pink Melon. And then the Genie K Designs, Dazzling Orange and Jelly Bean Green. And Brutus Monroe purple sketch. Those are all on sale right now. And I will leave links to those in the video description below. It takes me just about 10 minutes to update for the video to load itself onto YouTube. But this is the card for today. So thank you to everybody who joined. I will be back again, usually Wednesdays, every other Wednesday or my day, but we are coming back. I believe that it is Monday is the next time, Monday the 15th. So in about a week and a half, I will be back with some new thermal web goodies. So I will see you all then, the same time, Monday the 15th, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you all so much for being here. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye, you guys.